right, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we're just going to talk about one of the overlooked float switches that uh, serves some really good purposes out there in the field. Um, so this is what they call a double float switch. So rather than have a control panel that offers some functionality of using multiple float switches through a relay or contactor like you may be familiar with, you can eliminate that uh, control panel by using a double float switch and still achieve either a really wide range of pumping or um, in turbid applications you can also use these switches to prevent the the float from over cycling so just to give you a quick example of, of a turbid application so if you're dealing with really high volumes typically in the hundreds of thousands or sorry hundreds of gallons per minute uh, when the water is coming in at those velocities and those flow rates it causes the water to be really turbid in that uh, turbulent in that particular area um, and you can get float switches kind of bobbing up and down which can overcycle the system with the double float switch the way that it operates is you've got a little relay that's potted into this uh, it's kind of encapsulated in resin in here that requires both switches to be raised so it would be this one first and then this one second and then both switches to be lowered in order for the pump cycle process to happen so all, both up would be on and both down would be off um, if you're using a pump down configuration and that brings up another good point with these switches you want to make sure you order the right configuration pump up or pump down but also just as critical is that you order the right voltage because that relay, the way that this relay operates, you have to have the right voltage. So you can't just grab a 120 volt configuration and use it in 230 volt and vice versa for 230 volt to 120 volt applications. Um, so keep those things in mind. The nice thing about uh, these double float switches is you can actually get really tight with a minimum pumping range of 1.75 inches, which that's, seems extreme, but you could stagger them, kind of one over here, one over here, and have them really tight and really close. Uh, alternatively, you can actually, with the default setup, have a range up to 48 feet, which you couldn't typically accomplish with a single wide angle float switch. So a big advantage there. And then of course, if you're having that really wide pumping range of 48 feet, if you were using a wide angle switch, you would wanna have pretty calm water uh, and you'd need a ton of room because the tether length on that one switch, it would swing really far. Um, so this kind of eliminates some of the mess that comes with having really long tether lengths. Of course, you can get floats hung up uh, and things like that that can cause problems with the system when you could just solve it by using one of these types of float switches. Now, obviously these float switches um, can also be used with control panels in conjunction with control panels uh, to achieve a wider range of pumping. One of the most common applications for this double float type of switch is relatively narrow diameter like pump basins and situations where you don't have a lot of room for a wide angle float switch but at the same time where you need to pump a lot of water or a higher volume of water. So a double float switch is, is a perfect way to address those types of situations. So when it comes to these types of switches, you've got two design choices to make. Uh, do you want a mercury switch or do you want a mechanical switch? Unfortunately, both are, are rated for non-potable water applications. Um, though if I had to use one in potable water, not recommending it I would definitely use the mechanical as opposed to the mercury some folks like the mercury but it does seem like the way the world is taking us away from the mercury switches and more things and applications are using the mechanical switches um, another thing to bring up is these floats are rated for one horsepower at 115 volts and two horsepower at 230 volts so you're about 13 to 15 amp range with a maximum amperage on startup at 55 amps. And I suppose last but not least, uh, these float switches are rated for waters up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it could get a little hot and still operate without any problems. So uh, a great switch for a variety of applications, specifically where you've got limited mobility of a traditional switch. So keep this in mind and uh, let's not let it be an overlooked switch any longer. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we will catch you next time.